Welcome everyone once again. Let's talk about social inclusion. And today we look at the Social Hub model, a local initiative in Tampere, Finland, designed to support uh, older adults, well-being and social inclusion. And to explain uh, more about the hub, I have invited Anirika Rantala, who will help us know more about this tool and as we'll see, its promising capabilities. Anirika, welcome to our episode. Hello, and thanks for the invitation to discuss. Anirika, what prompted you and your colleagues to conduct uh, this research on the social hub model, and why Finland? Yes, well, uh, developing age-friendly cities and supporting aging in older adults to age in place have become a public policy goal in many countries with aging populations. And based on their previous studies, we know that older adults' well-being and quality of life are related to the quality and depth of their social relationships and their engagement in neighborhood social activities. And we also know that social interaction and particip participation can help to reduce health risks related to social isolation and loneliness. So to say that neighborhoods are more than just geographic locations, they are places where older adults establish connections to others. So in recent years in the research, uh, there has been a shift from home to community-centric approaches in supporting older adults' well-being and providing preventive care. And the shift recognizes that promoting well-being extends beyond individual homes to include broader community and neighborhood environments. So the transitions from home to community-centric approaches is reflected in public policies with governments, cities and nonprofit organizations increasingly implementing new models aimed at enhancing older adults' well-being and fostering community engagement in Finland and, and also in other countries with aging populations. Mm -hmm. So in order to create age-friendly environments and communities, the, there is a growing need for knowledge on social innovations and local solutions. For this reason, studies like this our study that we make, which look at local models in particular culture and regional context are important as they provide example which researchers, policymakers, and practitioners can learn from. Mm -hmm. uh, let's follow up on this uh, evolution of research you mentioned from home to community care. What was missing um, from the research that led you to start this study? Yeah, so uh, when we started this research, our primary goal was to investigate if and how the social hub model can support older adults' uh, well-being and social inclusion. So at the outset, uh, we identified a gap in the literature concerning uh, local well-being service innovations. So while uh, previous studies have explored various models supporting aging in community settings, such as uh, retirement villages and naturally occurring retirement communities, and there was limited research on the role of local well-being services and social innovations in promoting older adults' well-being and social inclusion. So we aim to fill this gap by examining the social hub model, which is a social innovation developed to support community building at the neighborhood level. So our research focuses on exploring older adults' experiences and perceptions of social hubs and also uh, providing insights into how such local innovations can contribute to older adults' social inclusion. And uh, overall, we hope to generate new knowledge mm -hmm. that could inform the development of effective interventions and policies aimed at uh, supporting aging populations and uh, creating more age-friendly communities. Perfect. Well, let us know the most important findings. So what did you find in your study? Uh, well, to put it together, uh, the participants of our study regarded the social hubs as a valuable local resource that offers shared spaces for social encounters and promotes interaction with one's social and material environments and provides activities that encourage physical activity and also uh, creativity and allow for independence in participation. So the hubs were seen as important community assets uh, contributing to the overall well-being 
of local neighborhoods. And uh, secondly, the social hubs serve as gathering points for older adults, uh, fostering social interaction and community building among residents living in different types of housing. So uh, for example, people living in service housing and those who lived alone and uh, talk about feeling themselves lonely enjoyed meeting other people in the hub's premises and also getting to know new people uh, from the same neighborhood. So by facilitating meaningful social bonds and neighborhood networks, the social hubs help to reduce social isolation and loneliness among the participants. Also, uh, a third thing I would like to point out is the active role of older adults in shaping the community and communal activities. So uh, the participants visited actively the group activities offered in the hubs, but uh, they also started their own independent groups in the mm -hmm. hubs premises. Mm -hmm. So these independent groups highlight the importance of um, empowering older adults to actively engage in community life and also allowing resources and, and spaces for citizens to come together and interact with each other. So uh, in conclusion, the findings provide valuable insights into the potential of community-based models such as the social hub model in supporting aging population and fostering age-friendly neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So the social hub model and the space of the space for social encounters and interactions it creates that you mentioned. Um, tell me more. Uh, you mentioned this before. Can you tell us more about how it impacts as well, not only these individuals that you mentioned, but uh, how it impacts uh, government policy, NGOs, local powers? What can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so, uh, well, by uh, recognizing the social hubs as a valuable local resources, I think we can inform public policies aimed at promoting age-friendly communities. So uh, policymakers and service providers can use these findings to advocate for the development and support of similar community-based models in also other cities and maybe even other countries. So this could involve allocating funding and uh, resources to establish community spaces in neighborhoods, particularly in suburban areas where there may be a lack of accessible meeting places for older adults, or maybe the distance to the city center can be long or hard to reach. So the findings of our study highlight the importance of inclusive and also accessible community spaces, recognizing their importance in reducing social isolation and loneliness. So additionally, uh, I think it would be important to develop environments and support systems that enable older adults to live meaningfully within their neighborhoods. So this may involve investing in infrastructures, improvements, uh, providing accessible transportation options and also facilitating access to community-based services and resources. Uh, perfect. I would, would like to focus now on the research limitations of your study, so which can help lead or guide uh, future research on the topic. Tell me more about that. Yeah, well, uh, I guess there are several avenues for future research. Uh, but to name a few, so uh, some potential areas for further investigation could include longitudinal studies uh, where we could better assess the long-term effects of social hubs on their well-being and social inclusion of older adults. And uh, then something about the participants of the study. So we had 19 participants and all of them were white and most of the participants were female. So in the future, it would be beneficial to explore the experiences of diverse populations of older adults, including uh, those from different socioeconomic backgrounds, ethnicities, and also cultural backgrounds. So this would help better understand how the social hubs can meet the needs of diverse range of older adults. And also uh, maybe uh, one more limitation that I could mention is that the data collection took place during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, which could have influenced participants' experiences and perceptions of the social hubs. So while most of the restrictions were lifted 
at the time that we uh, collected the interviews, the pandemic context may still have impacted the findings in some way. So maybe a follow-up research, now that there is some time from the COVID restriction would be uh, in place. Mm. Some tips for future research. Anirika, if you had to sum up this conversation in one or two sentences, what would it be? Uh, well, uh, if there is uh, one key takeaway from this discussion, I think it's the importance of uh, community-based service models, such as social hubs in promoting the well-being and social inclusion of older adults. So these kind of social innovations can serve as valuable local resources that offer shared spaces for social interaction, facilitate meaningful activities and foster a sense of belonging within neighborhoods. So by recognizing the significance of social connections, shared spaces and community engagement, so we can work towards creating age-friendly environments and more caring and inclusive neighborhoods. Perfect. And straight to the point, a great close. And Erika, thank you very much. Thank you. To those who are watching us on YouTube, um, on the description of this video, you have access to all the links, all the resources, all the materials to follow up on the research and to know more about what Anirika and I have been talking today. Uh, you can also find the links to our podcast uh, platforms to subscribe to the episodes and stay in touch with future episodes.